Hi, I'm Eric, and today I'm just gonna get straight into this. If you want cinematic footage, you need dynamic range. I did some research on Google, and it turns out that the human eye can see up to about 20 stops of dynamic range in the right setting. Whereas the best cameras in the game today only see about 15 stops of dynamic range. But to get the most human looking footage, <laughs> To get the most true to life looking footage, you wanna get all those stops of dynamic range. Don't know what dynamic range is, it's totally okay. That's just the ability to see in shadow, or dark spots of an image, and the highlights, a bright part of the image. The human eye does that super well. And your camera probably does too, if you shoot log. Log is just a flat picture profile that protects those shadows and protects the highlights, giving you that full dynamic range. Different companies have different log curves. So Canon has a normal log, C-Log 2 and C-Log 3. But if you're shooting Sony, Panasonic, Blackmagic, they all have their different log curves. To get that flat gray log footage to a normal color, you need to use something called a Rec. 709 LUT. Today I'm gonna to show you how I use Gamut's Rec. 709 LUT on my Log2 footage from my C200 RAW Log2 footage, my R5 RAW Log2 footage, and my C70 Log2 MP4 footage. I partnered with Gamut to make my own creative LUT pack and I'm gonna get to that at the end of this video, but I highly recommend their Rec. 709 LUTs. They are dialed in very well. I currently use Premiere Pro. It's fine. I'm fine. But Rec. 709 LUTs and Creative LUTs will work in any video editing software. DaVinci, Final Cut, Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> For the sake of brevity and straightforwardness in this video, I'm only going to edit five different Log2 clips across the three different cameras, C200, R5, and C70 today in Premiere for you. So in Premiere, I'm going to import my footage. The shortcut is Command-I for import. I'm gonna to go to the right place in my finder to get this footage. And I'm going to select all those clips and import them in. Now they're all different resolutions and sizes. So I'm gonna drag them into the timeline. I'm going to unlink all the audio because we don't need that. And voila. Okay, so we have five separate clips. And I'm going to address these two over here. This one is way zoomed in because this sequence is a 4K DCI timeline. 24 frames a second, 4096 pixels wide, and 2160 tall. That is 4K DCI, 17.9 aspect ratio. The reason this one's so punched in is because this was 8K on the R5 shooting in RAW. All I have to do is press the backslash next to the shift button on the keyboard. That's the shortcut to get it and scale it to frame size. You can also go up to scale over here to do that. If I wanna do that with this 1080 footage, I'll do it, but it doesn't fill the whole frame, so I just go over to the scale and increase it to 107 to get it to that 17 by nine aspect ratio. You can also tell that it's upside down, so I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees in that motion panel as well. So now everything is in the 4K DCI format and I'm good to go. So as I mentioned before, we need to apply a Rec. 709 to this Log2 footage. You could do that individually on each clip, but what I would recommend is if all of it is Log2, like most shoots are, you're usually shooting in the same log curve, normally on the same camera, I like to go down here next to all my clips, add a new item, an adjustment layer, and drag that over all of the clips. So everything that's underneath this adjustment layer will be affected uh, by what you put on the adjustment layer. So this is where I'm going to put the Rec. 709 LUT to bring it from that gray mush to real life color. I'll click on the adjustment layer to select it and I'll go over to Lumetri Color on the right side here and I wanna be in the basic correction panel. There you'll see input LUT and a drop down menu. If you have a Rec. 709 LUT in one of the folders in Finder or wherever it is on your computer, you can browse for that and find it but what I recommend is putting it in a very specific folder so that it'll show up in this drop-down menu for you. You can see that I have Gamut C-Log2 in here, um, so I can just select it on that drop-down. So let's find out which folder to put that in so that it's in your drop-down menu as well. Select Finder and go up to the top bar on your computer where it says Go, and now I have to teach you one of the stupidest things Apple's ever done. Uh, you have to select Option to get library to show up in this drop-down menu, which is the silliest thing ever, but anyway. You hit option, click library, and that will bring you to library in Finder. From there, you go library to application support, and then to Adobe, and then to common, LUTs, and then you will have 
um, your next option here. Not sure if these folders are already in there for you. If they're not, then at the very least, make the two folders technical and creative, spelt exactly how I have them here so that they will show up in Premiere for you. Technical is where you'll put your Rec. 709 LUTs, and then when I get to the creative stuff, that's where you're gonna put your creative LUTs um, in that creative folder, under the LUT folder, under Common, under Adobe, under Application Support, under Library. <laughs> Simple enough, right? <laughs> These are the kinds of things that I put off for literally years until someone sits me down and makes me do it, and then I save years off of my life when I edit. Or maybe just go to DaVinci, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Once that's done, you have your Rec. 709 LUTs in that technical folder. Go back to Premiere, log out of it, quit, and then open Premiere back up. When you open it back up and you want to put the Rec. 709 on that adjustment layer, it should show up in this drop down menu under the input LUT section in basic correction. So now I'm going to apply that C log to Rec. 709 LUT to the footage, and you can see that it took it from gray to normal color. So now that Rec. 709 is applied over all of these clips in this timeline, which is awesome, but I don't want it to just be boring, normal colors. I want a little bit of sloths on there. I want some vibes. And I'm really excited to announce that Gamut and I came up with a new creative light collection called 606. It is primarily modeled after my presets, Ravenswood, Belmont, and Montrose. A very standard, classic looking one. Uh, a little bit more vibey, desaturated and contrast looking one, and a black and white. But on top of that, we also included a very cinematic, warm LUT and a cool cinematic LUT. Super excited about this. I'm just gonna kind of play with them on this adjustment layer so you can see what they look like on these different clips. So I have Nolas here. Uh, first, I'm going to apply my Avondale LUT, which is that uh, cinematic warm one. So I'm gonna go down to the creative panel down here. And that same thing, you're gonna file that, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna follow that file format in Finder to put your creative LUTs in the creative folder under LUTs common, you know, following that path next to technical. And then that will show up in your creative drop-down panel here too, where it says look. So here I'm going to apply Avondale. So you can see is that warm, kind of rich, uh, cinematic look. And you might notice that it brings exposure down a little bit. It's commonplace for a lot of LUTs, a lot of creative LUTs, protecting highlights. All you have to do is individually go to each clip and bring up exposure or shadows if necessary, if it's um, bringing that exposure down too far for you. I just wanna kinda scroll through and show you what it looks like across this footage. We created these creative LUTs to be around 60 to 100% intensity, looking best. Um, you'll find that if you have some other creative LUTs that weren't made to be that way, you might have to dial it all the way back to, you know, like 30, 40%, and you'll find that on this intensity slider in the creative panel over on the right side there. But here, I'm gonna maybe, I'm just gonna put it at like 80, just above 80 for these clips, so you can kind of see what it looks like. And then if you wanna to toggle back and forth between Rec. 709 and your creative look, you can just check and uncheck this box, so you can see how it makes it look a bit more cinematic and contrasty and vibey. Super fun. There's Joe running in Manhattan. Wanted to select a few different clips uh, across different genres, not just weddings. More lifestyle is a shot from a Montana wedding. And I'm just gonna kind of cycle through the different creative LUTs um, just so you can see what those look like. Avondale is that warm cinematic one. North Park is more of a cool cinematic one. So you can see the highlights are much more blue. Uh, white is much more blue. And this one's like super interesting and more of like an, an urban environment or a nighttime scene. Um, you can see that the gray looks a little bit more blue in that shot. Um, so we have those and then uh, we have Ravenswood, which is the super true to life look. And this one, uh, the intensity is, is definitely stronger. So if you have uh, a scene that already has a bunch of contrast, you might need to dial that back a bit more more towards the 50 to 60%, so it's not as intense. At 100, it can be a little much. But you'll notice that on a, like a cloudy day or um, a scene that feels more flat, maybe more like this, um, where Joe's running, you might want more contrast in that image, more towards 190 here. Doesn't look as intense when it's overcast like that. So Ravenswood is, is definitely what I use on weddings a lot now um, to get that really true to life look. And then Belmont is a bit more vibey. You'll see that there's less intensity in the greens. Uh, I really like how Belmont looks on this scene here. Uh, there's, the greens are less saturated and um, everything overall is just a bit less saturated. 
and bringing it up to about 80% intensity. Yeah, I really like how that looks there. And then um, finally, this one needs to be at 100% because it's black and white. Uh, Montrose is the last one. And just love the contrast ratio on that one. It's obviously a vibe, not always doing black and white. Um, but yeah, really dialed that in um, for, for contrast ratio. And really dynamic images like this, you might need to go up to basic correction and change some of the contrast. And so this is kind of what I wanted to get into with dialing in each individual clip. After I've put Rec. 709 and Creative on uh, the adjustment layer, layer over all of my clips, I then go into each individual clip and edit it like a photo. So I'm gonna go back to Avondale here and tweak each individual clip uh, to my liking. So I'll select the clip under the adjustment layer and I'll go back to basic correction on the right. This one feels a little dark to me, so I'm gonna increase exposure. Don't wanna do it too much because that starts degrading the quality of the clip. That was plenty for me there. I'll kind of shift through the different areas of the clip to see if it looks good across. I'm really kind of digging how that looks already. Maybe pull a little bit more on shadows to get a little bit more exposure. Add in a little bit more contrast. And that one's pretty much ready to send. Here at this scene at the table with the guys in Yosemite, contrast feels a little strong. So I can dial contrast back a bit and I could even desaturate it a little here as well to get it more in line, more balanced, easy. Clip of Joe running feels a little too flat for me, so I wanna add more contrast here. Too much, right about there. And if you're not shooting raw, um, which this is a raw clip, so I can go up to the source on the top left here and change my white balance if I need to, which is wild when you shoot raw. Um, but if you're just shooting MP4, um, you're gonna wanna shoot that right in camera as much as possible. But yeah, I can change color a bit here, maybe lift the shadows a bit. It's right around where I wanna be for this image. And finally, these last two, this scene with these awesome pieces of furniture. Dial the highlights back to protect more of that dynamic range, give it a little bit more contrast so it's punchier more saturated. That's looking really good. Great, and then finally, this last clip really doesn't need to be touched all that much because it is just lit very, very well on the edge of these trees with uh, bounced light coming up off of a light dirt road and it's just gorgeous summer light. Um, so yeah, maybe I wanted to pull highlights back, add a little bit more contrast. What's crazy is recently a lot of people are just like, I know you're doing all sorts of stuff to your footage to make it look great. Truth is, I've pretty much almost always just done this, a Rec. 709 LUT, a Creative LUT, uh, dialed back at certain intensity, and then going into each individual clip and editing them as if they are photos, like I am in Lightroom. If I ever need to go down to this curve panel, I will from time to time to, you know, desaturate a certain specific color if it's too hot, or if um, something needs to be toned down in brightness with the Luma, um, which you can drag these drippers and put them anywhere to adjust that stuff, which <laughs> looks wild. Um, but normally it's just me tweaking stuff in basic corrections and that's about it. So that gives you an idea of what my workflow looks like if you've been interested in how I get the looks that I do. This is exactly how I do it. Um, but what's super interesting and equally frustrating in Premiere is when you export, um, Premiere desaturates your colors on your exports. Don't ask me why, it has something to do with broadcast settings and something about NTSC, Google it if you want to. Um, but if you want your colors to look as close as they do while you're editing them in the software, you need to, a, you need to apply a LUT on the export, which is so stupid, I know, um, but I'll show you how to do that as well. So Command N, M for the shortcut key to export. We'll just keep it titled as sequence five, put it in my edits folder. Typically I will change resolution if I need to. Some of these settings like bitrate. But the most important thing here is with color under the effects panel. And I know this panel is new. This is my newest version of Premiere. I am in 22.5.0 build 62, whatever that means. And under effects here, it says Lumetri look slash LUT. You're going to want to put in this LUT. It's 
linked in the description. Adobe has it available on their website for free. It's called the QT Gamma Compensation LUT. I renamed it as resaturate.cube and I apply that every single time I export a video out of Premiere. If you use DaVinci, it's not your issue. Uh, if you use Final Cut, it's probably not a problem. It's just uh, what we have to deal with if we're in this software. Anyways, that's what I do when I export. I hope all that information was helpful at the very least. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer any you have down below. The LUTs are available now. 606 collection through Gamut. It's linked down below if you'd like to check it out. At the very least, get a Rec. 709. Um, they're super affordable. And best of luck with your coloring. See you later.